for today, mister! Run, Lloyd! Run for your life! <laughs> hey! You ain't garbage! Yes! Superlative! I was worried, Lloyd! trouble having to finish this state-mandated lecture on the magic of puberty. Now, oh, where was I? Oh, yeah. This is a special time in your young lives. A time of blooming, a time of changes, a time to go. Now, get out of here, you carbon-based slackers. Ugh, there's nothing can take the shine off the magic of puberty like an old lady robot telling you about it. Makes it seem so... Dusty. I like the magic of puberty. Maybe tomorrow Mrs. Bolt will saw somebody in half or pull a rabbit out of her head. I think you missed the point, my large friend. Puberty itself is a fascinating magical process, and I, for one, am looking forward to it. Tell me, Edward, do you see any stubble on my lobes? No skullless, but I see a few new wrinkles. Very funny, Edward. Wait till you see what puberty has in store for you. What do you know? What's he talking about, Lloyd? Huh? Sorry, I wasn't really listening. Why? What's with you? I've been kind of thinking about something. <laughs> Brittany! Hey, no staring from the Geek Patrol. She talked to us. Brittany is the most dreamily configured set of proteins I've ever observed. Yeah. Where's that weird sound coming from? Oh, that's my antenna. It's kind of been acting up lately. Perhaps you should see a doctor, Lloyd. That, or buy a hat. Now, come on, I don't want to miss the bus. So, what did you do at school today, Lloyd? Nothing. Oh, please, tell us, Lloyd. Nothing, really. I'll tell you what I was doing. I was playing in the sandbox with that kid, Snot Face Johnny. You know, the kid whose face is actually made of snot? Well, he fell down and got sand stuck all over him. He cried, but I laughed. And then I had snack time with Scaly Bob. His tail got yanked up on the slide. But it'll go back. so fast. And check this out. I can drive with no lips. Mom, Lloyd's thinking about kissing girls again. Huh? huh? Hey! Keep out of my brain, Francine! Or else what? You're gonna kiss me to death? Why, you little... That's enough, you two. Francine, no telepathy at the dinner table. Lloyd! Lloyd, your antenna. Huh? Oh, yeah. He's been doing that for a couple of days. A couple of days? Lloyd... I think it's time you and I had a talk. Sorry to bother you, Commander, but Larry spilled his cocoa slushy on the fusion control panel, and now the station's threatening to blow itself up. Three minutes to self-destruct. Commander, I think we need some cup holders. Mm. I'll be right there. We'll talk tomorrow, Lloyd. Meanwhile, both of you finish your dinner and get yourselves to bed. And no fighting! Kissy face! Eavesdropper! Kissy face! Pip squeak! Kissy face! Run! Kissy face! Kissy face! Kissy face! Kissy face! A thousand times! Kissy face! Kissy Excuse face! Kissy face! Children! I believe this qualifies as fighting! Stupid brain reading, spoon bending, booger eating brat sister! I wish I could just get away from her in this whole stupid place! Yeah! I get me one of them souped up rocky cars, head out to the Shracknar Nebula, Solar wind blowing in my face. Just me, a big old bag of tendril jerky, and Britain. Count me in, amigo, but lose the jerky. Chicks don't dig it. Nebulator? But, but what are you doing outside my head? It was the weirdest thing that ever happened to me. I was sitting in my 
room, minding my own business, when all of a sudden, my antenna started buzzing again. But this time, it lit up, and this guy popped out of it. And then he started talking to me. Oh, come on, Lloyd. You must have been dreaming or something. No, I was awake, I swear. It really happened. Look, man, you've been under a lot of pressure lately. What with that big hairy math test and core cocky tryouts, you were probably just imagining stuff. I don't know. Think about it, man. Pretty ladies. What did you say? Uh, I said hello, pretty lockers. I just happen to think these lockers are very attractive. T whatever. What is happening to me? Eddie, Eddie, it happened again. Aw, oh, jeez, Lloyd, will you quit it? What happened again? Lloyd claims that some weird guy keeps popping out of his antenna. I'm not claiming it. It's true. Aw, oh, you're crazy, man. Not necessarily. The projection of telepathic imagery is a common phenomenon among certain species. Telepathic imagery? What are you talking about? Um, excuse me. Could I get to my locker? Hi. See? Who was that guy? Well, he's... He's the Nebulator. The Nebu who? The Nebulator. He's, you know, a guy made up for when I'm daydreaming about, you know, rescuing girls and junk. Oh, you, you mean like El Curto, the masked good guy. You two are pathetic. Fascinating. It's as if Lloyd's internal fantasy alter ego is manifesting itself as an external image. El Curto no comprende. Neither does El Eddie. He means for some reason the guy I've been thinking about in here is showing up out there for everyone to see. Oh man, when kids start seeing I have a fantasy guy, I'm gonna be the laughing stock of the whole school. Why me? Why me? Probably because you're thinking about girls all the time. Eddie may have a point. This nebulator seems to be a stronger, more masculine version of yourself. A little something for the ladies, if you will. Perhaps if you stop thinking about girls, he won't be inclined to show up. Right, right. Stop thinking about girls. I can do that. I think... And so the male zip node, unable to resist the call of nature, ignores his own survival instinct, enters the lair of the female zip node, and begins the courtship dance. Not realizing that it will end with a 20 gigawatt jolt of electricity straight to his brain, which Don't will think about girls. Don't think about girls. Don't think about girls. Offspring. Don't think about... Years later, once the offspring has grown and become more Don't active, think about girls. Don't think about girls. Don't think about... Oh, I gotta think about something else. What did I used to think about before I I was always thinking about girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Rodeo clown, Lloyd. I haven't thought about you since kindergarten. Babylon. Whoa. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one, Mrs. Bolt, ma'am. Well, be quiet and pay attention. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. This self-destructive instinct is not restricted to the zip node. Think about something else. Think about something else. Think about something else. Think about something else. You know, you're real pretty. Oh no! This can't be happening! Hey, who the heck are you? You must be both. Me, I'm fantasy tough guy Lloyd, but my friends call me the Nebulator. Nebulon! <laughs> so, Lloyd. I understand we've been having a little problem in class, bothering girls, disrupting your teacher, projecting telepathic images of your inner fantasies. I can't help it, Mr. Feely. I really have been trying to control it. Honest! Well, apparently you haven't been trying hard enough. But you don't understand, sir. These things are powerful. They're like nothing you've ever seen before. <laughs> Son. Look, I've been doing this job for seven eons. I've seen a pubescent hydrolax pull his own head off, grow three new ones. I've seen an eighth grade Shantok belch molten lava all over this desk. Well, well, at least the desk that used to be here. I once saw an entire class of bovium bioworm burst right out of their skins, screeching like banshees. So don't you tell me that you've got something I've never seen before, because there is nothing, and I mean nothing, that I haven't seen before. Well, have you seen me, Beetle Boy? I don't get it, Mom. What is wrong with me? Nothing's wrong, Lloyd. Look, honey, I should have told you about this before. It's just, well, it's hard for parents to talk to their kids about the facts of life. The facts of life? What do they have to do with this? Well, Lloyd, you see, males of our species, boys like you, when they approach a certain age, their bodies start to go through certain changes. Oh, man, not this stuff again. And one of those changes, which apparently you've begun experiencing, involves your antenna sort of 
acting up for a little while and projecting your inner fantasies. It's known as synaptic antenna displayification, or SAD for short. It's completely normal. So it'll go away after a while? Absolutely. No question about it. Of course, it might get a little worse first. Worse? How much worse can it get? <laughs> Goodness, Lord, you certainly lead an interesting fantasy life. Well, you... <laughs> Rodeo Clown Lloyd, you slay me! I'm glad it's entertaining to you, Station, because it's humiliating to me! Whoa. Hey there, Lloyd, my boy! Oh, hi, Grandpa Leo. Your ma tells me it finally happened! You're going through your SADs! Makes me so proud! Proud? Look at me! <laughs> yeah! See what you mean. A little on the boring side, ain't they? Why, in my day, we knew how to displayify. Big Tahuna Leo dancing with green girls in hula skirts. Swamp King Leo lording it over the frog women of Amphibios. Why, I had one about me and your Granny Agnes once. Grandpa, please! I don't want to hear about that stuff. That's the problem with you kids today. You don't appreciate a good displayification. It's not that, Grandpa. It's just, this is hard for me, okay? Ah, oh, come on, boy, what's so hard? Heck, back on the home planet, my buddies and I had a riot comparing fantasy characters. We even had a contest to see who's with the zanius. But, Grandpa, I'm not on the home planet. I'm the only one on the station who's having this problem. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, heck, Lloyd, you must feel like a freak. <laughs> oh, well, you want my advice? Lie low. Don't draw any attention to yourself. That way, even if your displayifications are going crazy, people will be watching them and they'll forget you're even there. Well, good luck. Gotta go. Maybe he's right. Maybe they'll forget I'm even there. Wow, Lloyd, you got your own secret service, guys. You must be pretty important to yourself. No talking to the president, son. Yacker, please, just pretend I'm not even here. I've been instructed by the Board of Education to read the following. It has come to our attention that certain outward fantastical manifestations, though perfectly natural, are being experienced by one of our pupils who shall remain anonymous. That's my man Lloyd she's talking about. Oh. These manifestations are completely normal and do not warrant shame or ridicule. Although we may feel differently, there's no reason to tease, shun, or otherwise humiliate this unfortunate anonymous pupil. Please remember he or she is your fellow student and not a freak or monster. Hey, yeah, you know, I'm really sorry about the way he's been bugging you in class, but see, I wasn't really... No, you don't understand, Lloyd. I like the Nebulator. You do? Sure, he's so handsome and brave. It's like he's from TV or something. Do you think I could, you know, talk to him again? Oh, uh, well, you see, Brittany, it doesn't really work that way. This whole displayification thing is really kind of complicated, and... Hello, lovely lady. Huh? Oh, Nebulator, you came back for me. You know, in all my years exterminating vermin throughout the universe, I've never seen anyone as beautiful as you are. Really? Hey, uh, actually, I was thinking of saying something like that. Your prettiness takes my breath away, like a Venuvian sucker bat that is latched onto my face. Like, uh, like, uh, hello, lovely ladies. You pig! myself. Lloyd? Lloyd, buddy, we've been looking all over for you. What are you doing in here? Getting ready to go home. But school's not over for another three hours. I can wait. You guys go on back. Fantasy dog boy Lloyd will keep me company. He's very loyal. <laughs> what a cute little fella. It'll be such a shame to say goodbye. What do you mean? Well, after your humiliation in class this morning, the fellows and I decided to find a way to help you. That's when I came up with the idea for this. A football helmet? For 
Precisely, but with a few modifications. By inverting the exact frequency of your brain's neurotransmitters, I have devised a magnetic containment field that will limit your neurogenic projection capabilities. In other words, Lloyd, lock that baby on your head and all your pesky little friends will be trapped inside where no one can see them. You'll never be embarrassed again! Well, I'll be derfed. The thing seems to be holding. Hopefully now we can actually learn something around here without any more interruptions. All right, let's see. Who wants to solve this equation at the board? I know. How about the student who spent the last hour of class hiding on a school bus? Nebulon, front and center. Yes, ma'am. haven't seen before. So this is what goes on inside a 13-year-old's head. There's more. Some of them are outside. And one of them's working its way through the sewer system. Lloyd, I heard about what happened in school today. It must have been really embarrassing, all your fantasies standing naked for the world to see. But you have to admit, it's kind of funny. I'm never going to school again. Oh, now, Lloyd, don't be ridiculous. I'm not kidding. I'm the biggest freak on this side of the galaxy. I might as well run away and join a 42-ring circus. I think I have enough acts to fill every ring. You know, Lloyd, one thing you learn when you get to be an adult is that no matter how horrible something seems at the time, it's never as big a deal as you think it is. Yeah, right. Trust me, Lloyd, this too shall pass. In fact, I'll bet every kid on the station has forgotten it by now. Look, girl, there he is! Ah! See, I told you, my brother's a freak! He scares me! That's it! I'm out of here! But honey, where are you going? Out! Where no one will ever have to see me again! All right, show's over. Everybody pay me my nickel. Hey, kid. How's it going? Fine. Mind if I cop a squat? It's a free roof. Guess we really messed things up for you, eh, kid? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it's not you. It's having everybody see you. I mean, these SADs are driving me crazy. Well, that's the deal with puberty. All of a sudden, things happen to your body. Like what Mrs. Bolt was talking about. Pimples and facial hair and your armpits catching fire. That's only if you're a lava person from Obsidian Prime. Yeah, I know. The point is, they're all things that are out there for everybody to see. Exactly. It's embarrassing. It makes it so I'm scared to even face anybody. Scared, huh? Maybe your problem's not so complicated after all. Seems to me you just have to be brave. Easy for you to say. You're the nebulator. You're not scared of anything. Kid, all you gotta do is feel that fear and find that something inside of you that helps you do what you need to do anyway. But I don't have that thing inside of me. Yes, you do. You have me. <laughs> I know, honey. Lloyd, could you please pick up the pace? In a minute, Mom. I'm getting ready. Gentlemen? Let's go. Why not? Mom, Rodeo Clown Lloyd is picking on me. <laughs> she started it. Eyes on the prize, boys. Eyes on the prize. All right. Looks like we're all here except for Nebulon and his cast of thousands. Just as well, maybe we'll actually be able to learn something today. Wait! Mrs. Bolt, ma'am, I have a tardy slip. Whatever, just come in the classroom. Gentlemen, follow me. <laughs> Nebulon, sit at your desk, please. In a minute, ma'am. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a word with the class first. Ah, oh, all right. Make it quick. 
You guys might have noticed that the last couple of days, fantasy guys have been popping out of my head. <laughs> but you know what? I don't care. Because the thing is, since the first time the nebulator popped out in class, all I was able to think about was how embarrassing it was. I tried hiding these guys. I tried running away from them. But I can't, because these guys are me. They're what I think. They're what I hope. And I like them. And wherever I go, and whatever I do, they're going to be there too. Right, guys? Guys? Hey, what's going on? Where's everybody going? Ooh. Must be time. Time? Time for what? Time to go, buddy. It's different for every kid, but this phase in your life only lasts for a little while. And then, it's over. But wait, I was just getting used to you. You can't just go. Sorry, pal. Gotta. See you on the inside. And kid, keep an eye on Brittany for me. Okay, Nebulon, sharing time's over. Get back to your desk. Uh, Brittany? Shut up, dork. It's only a matter of time. <laughs>